You know, we're living in a world today where it can be increasingly difficult to stay close to God. A newly published book helps readers stay connected. And joining us now is Lauren Green, author of Lighthouse Faith and chief religion correspondent for Fox News Channel. Welcome to the program. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me, Lauren. It's, your name is very easy to remember now. <laughs> it's Green, Ashburn. <laughs> nope. Yeah, no problem. Is your middle name Elizabeth? No, no. no it's okay, Susan, good. So okay, it's okay, okay, good. Um, you know, in reading this book, you had some fascinating things to say about the commandments, I thought. Yes. Um, let's take a look at the uh, full screen. You write that a lot of people are angry with God and that our lives have not gone according to our plan. But you write that the commandments are key and they have an order and important. They bow to the first commandment to keep God first, keeping God as the light, the fire on the stick. How did you come to that realization? Well, because of a sermon I heard on the Ten Commandments several years ago, probably more than a decade ago, and it talked about how the first commandment is key and how the commandments two through ten are really defined by the relationship to the first commandment and that you couldn't violate commandments two through ten without first violating number, number one, which is, I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods before me, which to me was a, not only a command but a statement of fact. There are no other gods. There is only God. So God is trying to tell you, I am key. And so we made in the image of God are more who we are when we abide by these laws because the sermon also stated that um, these commandments are not just arbitrary laws but a description of who God is. And it's very difficult to follow those commandments as we know <laughs> and, and I'm sure. Um, Especially when most people don't even know the list. That's right, that's right, or the first one in the right. first order, right. <laughs> Let's uh, switch subjects a little bit. You're a religion correspondent at a major ca major cable network. I've worked there. Um, it's very competitive. How much do you have to fight for airtime to get religion stories told? Well, any story in a network news organization has to be pitched, and it has to have news value. So um, every reporter does that. I mean, you, you pitch a story, you think it's going to have the news value, and then you pitch it out there. One of the problems, I think, is that as a religion correspondent, you understand why this is important on a religious basis, but maybe um, you're trying to translate it into a news story, and I think that's the challenge. One of the things I could not believe when I read your bio, your extensive bio, was that you played the piano for Pope Benedict and his brother in a in a concert that was just you you guys well it was it was on the anniversary it was the 90th birthday of um Card, uh, Monsignor Ratzinger which is uh, um Pope Benedict's brother and I had met uh, um, Monsignor a year before that on his 89th birthday. <laughs> and the person who invited me to meet him in Regensburg and said, you know, we're going to be doing um, a concert in Rome for him um, and the Holy Father, who was had resigned at that point. And he says, would you like to be a part of the concert? I went, uh, duh. duh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And you've, you've just covered many Catholic events. I could sit here and talk to you for hours about covering the beatification of John Paul II, Pope Benedict's the 16th visit to the U.S. Just, thank it's you amazing. so much. It's an amazing opportunity, and I'm, I'm incredibly blessed. Thank you so much thank for you. joining us. Lauren Green, author of Lighthouse Faith, God is a Living Reality in a World Immersed in Fog. Thank you so much.